Hello everybody, my name is Eric Bouchard. I'm a developer advocate at Couchbase, and you may know me as HTTP Junkie on Twitter. Today we are gonna be making a companion video for a blog post that we have up on the Couchbase blog. So let's go ahead and pull that up and take a look at it. So this is a blog post that I updated about a month ago. And I've been giving some mentor sessions with people that are uh, just getting into web development, just getting into Node.js, wanting to learn about document databases. And I thought that this is a perfect uh, kind of exercise to walk through to learn a lot of different things about basically building a REST API, working with Node, working with asynchronous JavaScript, using Postman to test your REST API, um, JSON data modeling at a very basic level, um, being able to uh, encrypt uh, passwords uh, for the database and how to um, compare and decrypt those passwords to make sure you have the right user logging in. I'm gonna cover all of that stuff in this video. Um, one thing you'll find if you scroll down to the end of this blog post is a repo and that is to a, a repository on GitHub for Couchbase Labs. And here you will have uh, an entire readme, which will pretty much walk through everything that we're about to do in this video. So if you get behind, if you just wanna passively watch the video, you can always go back, check out this repo, check out the readme, and at that point you can walk through it uh, by yourself. Uh, if you want, spend a little bit more time on each section and everything. Now let's go ahead and get this out of the way and we'll go ahead and get started. So what are the prerequisites you need to do this? Pretty much two things. Uh, one is having, of course, an editor. I have Visual Studio Code. But the two main um, requirements will be Node.js uh, running on your local machine and probably um, Docker desktop. Now you could always download Couchbase and, and run it locally, but I just like doing things through Docker. Now the first thing that you would wanna do is pull down our official Couchbase Docker uh, image. And um, I believe I already have mine, so it should be up to date, but that's the command you would run there. And then as you can find in the readme file, you will have a Docker run command. So let's take a look at that real quick. So basically we are saying Docker run, um, we are giving it a name of CB. So this is the, um, container name that uh, Docker is gonna create for us. But as soon as we run this, it's gonna set up very quickly. And like that, we already have Couchbase running on our local machine. Isn't that great? Now, um, typically this command up here will take a couple minutes to run. That's, um, that just is it pulling down all the uh, assets it needs to be able to run Couchbase on your local machine. But after that, yeah, one command and we're off and running. So I can go ahead and get rid of this uh, command prompt here and we can open up a new window and just check out our local host. And now we have Couchbase server ready to go. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a new cluster real quick. I'm just gonna call this blog tutorial. Uh, I'm gonna use administrator for the username and password. Go ahead and accept those, accept the terms. I'm gonna uncheck this box here and we'll configure disk and memory. Um, everything looks good here. Uh, I do not actually want to have any of these checked because we're not gonna be using all those. We're only gonna be using data, query, and index. So that's all I'm gonna set up uh, on this machine for now. Go ahead and hit save and finish. Um, we will need to create a bucket now the bucket is kind of like a collection of documents. Um, so we might have a, de a bucket dedicated to our specific blog application, um, potentially another bucket which is dedicated to another REST API or something. So we're gonna call it blog. And I'm gonna check this flush button down here. That's pretty good if you want to, if you're doing development on um, a bucket and you're gonna be inputting data and may, maybe messing something up and you just wanna flush it all out, this will get rid of all the documents in this bucket in basically one click. And we'll probably use that a few times. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the bucket. 
So that's um, getting ready for us. And at this point, we need to start setting up our application. So we are going to kind of uh, forget about Couchbase here for a minute and we're gonna move over to um, another terminal. And first thing we should do is we should actually download the uh, repo that we're using here. So we'll do that first. So we're gonna do git clone. And then here is the repo that we were just looking at. And that'll clone that. And then we can CD into that directory, which is called Couchbase node blog API. And then what I could do is open that in Visual Studio Code. And I'm actually gonna do this and move it off screen. But at that point, you can open up that readme file, um, or you could just go ahead and create that blog uh, bucket over on Couchbase and just run this application and start issuing commands from Postman against it. But we're not gonna do that. We're gonna walk through everything uh, step by step for you. So I just wanted to make sure that I had that downloaded on my computer. Uh, also because I need a place to pull those uh, Postman files from. So we have some Postman collections and environment uh, variables that we wanna have set up so that we can test our REST API. And they're in this uh, directory. So I wanted to clone down that repo so that I have those on my computer. Otherwise, you could just save the, the JSON documents from uh, GitHub uh, into a text file on your computer and import them that way. Uh, either way is fine. At this point though, we wanna go ahead and get started building our REST API. And so to do that, we need to make a new directory um, and I'm gonna call it blog API. And after that, we are going to CD into the directory. And then we are going to run npm init dash y which will take all the default settings for initializing uh, an NPM project. And we will also do touch server.js. So server.js is going to be the file that we write our entire REST application in, right? With, uh, with a node, uh, basically a demo um, Node.js Express application, you can typically fit everything into one file and that's exactly what we're going to do. So now that you can see it's set up, it's created a package.json for us. It's actually printed out that package.json right here in the shell. And that's great, so we know that that's done. The next thing that we wanna do is um, we're going to install a few packages. So I'm just gonna copy these so it doesn't take super long. And I'll go over them with you here. All right, so we have um, Couchbase, Express, Body Parser, UUID, Bcrypt.js, Cores, and Nodemon. And we'll talk about each of these in details as we, as we use them. We're gonna save them, uh, so they will be uh, dependencies that we're using in our project. There's not really any developer dependencies set up here. We don't really need any for this demo application. And then after that, you can see I have this double ampersand code dot that's just, uh, so after it gets done installing those packages, it's going to go ahead and open up this project in Visual Studio Code for us. And then we're gonna work from there uh, through the rest of the uh, video. So this will just take a moment. And now you will see that Visual Studio Code has opened up. I can go ahead and get rid of this terminal back here and we can get to work. We'll go ahead and open up a terminal here because we may need it again. In fact, we will need it again. And we'll also make our files a little bit smaller over here. We're gonna go ahead and open up that server.js. Notice there is nothing here yet. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy in some code. And this will be everything that we need to get a express server up and running. Now there, uh, this is where all the code will go for our middleware and our endpoints. And we'll, we'll do all that in a few minutes. Um, but for right now, what we might wanna try and do is just run 
node server, and you can do server or server.js. It's the same thing. And we'll go ahead and run that. There we go. And so you can see that we are now running on port 3000. So what's happened here is we have, um, we've required all of the different dependencies that we installed with NPM. We've created an express application by just calling express. We have used uh, cores here to allow us to do cross origin resource sharing. Body parser, which will help us to, um, as we make calls from either an HTML form or um, Postman, this will make sure that the HTTP posts that come over, that we uh, can use them as JSON objects very easily. Um, you can look more into this on your own, exactly what body parser does. Um, we just know that we have to install it in order to make sure that we can work uh, with those JavaScript objects uh, in a certain manner. Next, we have the connection to Couchbase. Not a whole lot that you need to understand here other than that we need to use our username and password that we set up when we were uh, setting up our cluster. And we need to target the bucket that we set up called blog. Uh, after that, we're basically just spinning up a, an express server and you can see it says running on port 3000. So yes, that web server is up and it is listening for requests However, if it did get a request, uh, it really couldn't do anything because we haven't written any endpoints here. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that next. So the next thing that we want to do is get right into creating our first endpoint. Now, this first endpoint that we're creating is actually not going to be part of our demo project. Instead, this is just to kind of get you familiar with um, how to create an endpoint in Express. And, um, and then we'll also then go test it with Postman. And we'll also, this will also give us a chance to create our first document in Couchbase, just so we can get all of that out of the way so you kind of understand what's going on, get a lay of the land. Now, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and copy in the first endpoint here, which will be, um, it will be a git operation or an HTTP git. And this will be a endpoint with the URL of profile and then we're gonna have a query parameter called profile ID. So uh, I'll show you how to uh, set this up on the Postman side, but just understand that we're gonna have something like profile forward slash one, two, three, four. And then that one, two, three, four will be the key of our document in our database, all right? So um, once, uh, once Express receives that request, um, we'll, have this callback, this uh, JavaScript callback, which is the function that will actually process that request. And inside there, we are using Couchbase to uh, do a collection.get. So we're expecting that there's already a document in the database that we want to get, and we're going to pass a key to it. So let's talk a little bit about Couchbase. Couchbase is a um, key value store document database. And let's just go ahead and take a look at oh, kind of what that means. So let's add our first document and we're gonna give it a key of one, two, three, four. And we're going to paste some, uh, some JSON in here. So uh, when, I, when I say key value, that's kind of what I mean. Like here, this is a key and this is a value. So JSON documents have lots of key values in them, right? But um, it, our database actually stores um, many, many JSON documents, and those are the value of a key value pair. And the key is this one, two, three, four. So if we save that, you will see here is a new document, our first document in our database. Here is the uh, document key, and here is the value, a JSON document. Cool. So at this point, we can now open up uh, Postman. And we want to bring in some collections that I've already created for you guys ahead of time. So if you've ever worked with Postman before, and actually this is a new layout, I think we just uploaded it or updated it yesterday, but there's an import button right here. And I'm going to go to upload files. Let's make sure also that we are kind of in the right um, directory here, source, GitHub, Couchbase Labs. And then we wanna look for yeah, so here's that Postman uh, folder, and we want to grab this postmancollection.json. So I'm gonna open that and import, 
And now you'll see that I have this Couchbase blog API set of collections. And these are set up in the exact order that we will use them in this video. So everything's set up exactly the way that you need it. Now there's also another concept in Postman um, called environment variables. So I'll click on that. Uh, environments, we have collections and environments. And I'm going to do an import, same thing. Uh, navigate to that same folder and click on the environment variables and open that one. And then we'll do an import. And what you will see now is that we have um, basically two variables set up. So when you have a React application or something like that and you are making calls to um, an API, and it's setting up a profile for you and a potentially a session for you and giving you information back when you use that API, you might want to store those values, right? You might want to store the current profile user that you are working with into a variable and potentially their session ID so that you can keep using those values in future requests. So uh, this is just kind of a way of replicating that here in Postman. Now, if I close out of that and I go back to collections here, and I actually click on Get Profile, you will see our first um, request that we're gonna set up. And it's gonna be an HTTP GET. And we are not using any environment variables yet. Um, but I'll actually show you how we could. So if you click on this eyeball over here, it'll show you our current um, variables. And we don't see our environment variables here. It's because we have to actually click on this right here and select Couchbase Blog. That'll change our environment. And now that you'll be able to see them. So profile ID is actually something that we're passing here. And let's say that a lot of our requests were using profile ID. And let's say that every once in a while we wanted to check the profile for one person versus another person. And we didn't want to keep on changing this value from one, two, three, four to four, three, two, one, et cetera. What we could do instead is we could say PID and then we could go over here and we could put that value here. One, two, three, four. Hit enter, and that'll save it. So now we're going to call um, our REST API uh, with the route profile, and we're gonna pass it one, two, three, four, because that's what's in that variable. And if we do that, oh, we don't have anything yet because we, um, we haven't saved our file and run our server. And that's something we're going to need to fix too, because um, every time I add code, I need to stop the server, uh, save my file, and then start the server back up again. So we're going to do something to fix that as well. So let's send that again. And looky there, we've got um, our content back, which is um, type profile and email is user1234. That's the document that is associated with the key 1234 in our database. Now, um, one of the other things I wanted to uh, show you over here is we have installed a package called Nodemon. So Nodemon is um, something that will allow us to continually make changes to our server without having to stop and restart the server every time. So instead of saying node server.js or node server, what we can do is say Nodemon server and that'll get our, um, our file up and running and watch as I, as I remove things here and save and then add it back and save. You'll see that it keeps starting and stopping down there kind of you know, for us. So that'll be very helpful so we don't have to keep doing that. Um, so cool, we've imported our collections, we've imported our um, environment variables and uh, I'll go ahead and save this request now um, and we can close out of this we're not gonna end up using this, this get, this HTTP get, because it's really um, not that secure. Basically, with this, anyone can call our API and they can basically guess at the, um, at the key. If they, know it's, if, if they know the key to our profile documents is, is some kind of a number, they could potentially just start guessing them. Um, so we don't wanna do that. We wanna make sure that if someone wants to request a profile or request a blog or request all the blogs made by one user, that they have to uh, pass a session ID to us and, uh, and a username and password and all that kind of stuff in order before they can start using our API. So what we're going to do actually is I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get rid of this one here because we're not gonna use it. 
And then I'm also going to remove this over here. But I think that kind of got us uh, acclimated to Postman, Couchbase, and a little bit about Express, how Express works, right? Super easy stuff so far. Now, um, our user profile can have any information describing a user, like address, phone, and other social media info. Uh, it's never really a good idea to store those things in the same document. So we're gonna want a, a combination of two documents for each user. One will store their profile information and the other will uh, store their account details, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at what those two documents might look like. So um, profile information could be a lot of things. Like I said, it could be address, phone number, these types of things. Um, and then our account information is just the email, the password, and then a PID that points back to the profile. So remember, each document in our database is a key value store. So the key for the profile will look something actually like this. It'll be like a hash. And then the value for the document will be something like this profile document, this JSON document right here. And then kind of the same thing for our account document, um, this will actually be, the account document will be the, the user email, just the way that I've set it up. And um, the value will be this JSON document here. So we have a way of kind of referencing back between the two, right? If, um, if I wanna know what account is associated with this profile, I can match on the, the email. If I wanted to um, know what profile is associated with this uh, account, I can uh, find that by the PID that I have on file here, okay? So this will, this will be a user's uh, account, uh, so to speak, uh, their profile store in our database will be these two documents kind of paired up together. So the first thing that we actually wanna do is we wanna create an endpoint that will take care of the account creation. And think of this as like your registration form on your website, right? Um, if someone wants to start, uh, one of the, the sites I like to think about is kind of like dev.to or um, Hacker Noon or one of these sites where, uh, or Reddit, where anyone can kind of get up and, and make blog posts or, or posts um, and the, all they need really to sign up is, and register is their uh, email and password or username and password, right? So think of this first endpoint as the endpoint that we would hit from our registration form on our website. And then what we'll do is we'll use Postman to kind of mimic that registration form and test to make sure that our, uh, our REST API uh, endpoint is working correctly. Now, I just posted in a lot of code here, and so bear with me for a moment, but I'm gonna walk through all of it. Now, this first bit of code here uh, is just some uh, code that makes sure that when a, an HTTP post, right, this first endpoint is gonna be an HTTP post, and it's gonna be for the route account. And um, this big function here is what's gonna get called. Now we, and, and we have access to request uh, and response. So request is kind of all the information that the user sent over to us, that the client sent over to us. That'll be the username and the password. Uh, and then the response will be an object that we can kind of uh, formulate and then send back to them. So we can send a response back to them. So the first thing we do here is we check to make sure, did we get a, an email and a password. So uh, the first check is if there was not an email and a password, both, we're gonna send a, a message back saying, hey, an email and a password are required. You didn't send us either of them. Like what's wrong with you? Now, otherwise, um, if only one of them was sent but not the other, we kind of know that this isn't the case. So we're gonna say, okay, uh, if this isn't true, then how about, uh, did they just miss one of either of them? And if so, we're then gonna send us a message saying, hey, um, either email or password is required. So if you're, if you're decent with JavaScript, you should be able to walk through this and kind of understand what's going on here. I know that you could probably write this a thousand different ways, but I just went with something really easy to understand. 
and that would cover both cases, whether they um, uh, only forget, maybe they forget to send one of either email or password, or they forget to send both. And this will just basically stop everything in its tracks. We won't continue on. We won't try to persist these documents to the database. We're just gonna send them back a 401 error and say uh, in, in, invalid whatever. Now, if we make it through this, we are on our way to trying to save uh, their email and their password and, and some additional information into the database. Um, so the first of our dependencies that we are gonna use here is UUID. UUID uh, helps us to create a unique identifier and for the profile, that will actually, the, the hash that gets generated from this command right here will actually be their key in the database. And um, as for the account, um, that remember that's gonna be an email, the, their email will be the key. Uh, and in fact, uh, the way that we're kinda gonna do these is the other order. So we're gonna do profile first and then account. So it might make sense to kinda switch those around. So now um, we have told, uh, oh, one more thing that I wanna kinda show you here. So uh, when we're creating an endpoint in Express, we basically create account docs, right? We, let's just say that this was uh, kind of like a function here, right? Create account docs. Um, when we create an endpoint, we are telling the endpoint what is the um, path or the the route for the endpoint. Um, you can also put a middleware here, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Uh, but then after that, you have this, uh, this callback function. So you can think of it kind of like this. We have um, a, a callback function called create account docs, and that equals some big function here, okay? And actually, you don't need to put these parens here. Um, the reason I wanted to do this, I wanted to kind of separate the two, is so that you could see here that uh, I have this function which is my uh, callback. And, and, and that's kind of all that, that this, you, well, I pasted all that code in and it looked like, oh man, creating a post in Express is super complex. Look at all that code. No, not really. This is all you need. Um, and this, this um, function here could be, you know, either very small or very large, right? Ours just happens to be kind of big because it's doing a few things. Um, but just know that you can kind of separate those two things if you want to and make it kind of easier to read but I'm gonna go ahead and back up here and go back to the way we were doing it before and just go ahead and use that uh, callback in line right there uh, in, in, in that uh, method for creating the, the post endpoint. All right, so um, we've gotten through, we've created a hash ID here. We've created basically the profile document. Document for the profile is ready to go. It's just a type called profile and an email, email uh, which is whatever email they sent over. We also have account, um, and this document's gonna have a type of account. I'll kind of show you why we're using types. This is sometimes you do this in a document database, other times you have collections and scopes. You can do either with Couchbase. Um, I'm just doing this. This is more of a legacy way of doing things, uh, and it's, it's just a, a way that more people understand um, how to set up documents in a document database. But um, outside of the types of each document, think of those as kind of like the, the table name. Like if you had a table name full of profile uh, profiles or a table name full of accounts in a, a relational database, this would kind of be like the, the table name, so to speak. And everything else are like the columns and rows for that information. Um, now, we, our PID for our account is gonna be that same ID that we generated here. Um, and the email, again, we're just gonna put the email in there. It's kind of redundant, but I'm gonna put it there anyways. Now the password, we don't wanna store the password just as they typed it in their HTML form. Uh, I think we're gonna use password one, two, three, four. Um, no, we wanna actually hash that and encrypt it uh, and then store the encrypted version in the database. Um, so we're going to take that password, um, encrypt it to a level of 10, and then the value of that is what will be stored in our uh, JSON document. Finally, we get to the good part. We are actually inserting doc documents into Couchbase now. Um, so if you remember from above here, we have this uh, collection equals uh, bucket.default collection. 
I'm not gonna go too much over this, just understand that this is kind of like the default collection for the bucket blog. And, and we can refer to it by this variable name here, collection. And I'm gonna say collection.insert. Um, so for our first document that we're gonna insert, it's gonna be the profile document. And remember, what is the key for that one? Yeah, it's that ID that we created. Um, what happens then is that we either, we either do some work after that. So if that's a success, if it inserts into the database with a success, um, then we're gonna do some more work, which is gonna be uh, all this code here. Uh, otherwise, we are going to catch if there is a failure, uh, we're gonna get a, an error back. And then we're gonna say response status 500 error. So server 500 error. And then we're going to send them back uh, whatever that error is. Uh, you could also do e, uh, e dot message. Uh, I think either would work, but um, anyways, we wanna send that information back to the person who called, who made this HTTP uh, post and uh, let them know that you know there was an issue and here, here's what the error says. All right, so if, 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 the, if, if we don't get an error, then let's go ahead and see what happens next, okay? So um, again, we have another insert that we wanna do. So if, if, the, if the profile gets inserted, uh, okay, then we wanna then start inserting the account document and its uh, key value is going to be the email, remember? Um, so if, if that's a success, then we're gonna do something else here. Basically, we're going to uh, we're gonna add a PID onto the result. The result is the object that's being sent back to the person who called, uh, who made this HTTP post. Uh, and that way they know what was the ID that we just created for that profile. That's information that they're gonna need. Otherwise, um, we are going to catch. And here's where something really cool happens. Um, if, the, uh, if the profile gets created, but for some reason there's a failure on the account, then we, we can't have that profile sitting along. So we have to kind of roll back and we have to remove that profile document and then send an error back to them and say, hey, account creation failed, um, removed ID, whatever. This is actually isn't necessarily uh, required here, but we can just say account creation failed and return a 500 error. So we've, we've thought about everything here, right? We're inserting one document, we're, we're doing this all asynchronously. We have, uh, we've stated that this function is an asynchronous function and we are awaiting on each one of these things and only doing more work once one completely finishes. Um, and we can also be able to catch errors, potentially roll back stuff, all that stuff here. So this is actually a pretty cool piece of code uh, for working with uh, Couchbase because you'll regularly need to do things like this. I think we're at the point now where we can go ahead and save and try to create uh, our first account, okay? Because this should all work. And now we wanna go over to Postman um, and we want to click on Create Account. Now, you'll notice one thing here. Um, I have the, the uh, route, uh, yeah, the, I'm sorry, the route, which is account. And then the body here, I'm using X www form URL encoded. Uh, this is the best option, but just understand that this is pretty much the same as if we had a, a, an HTML form on a website. We're just kind of replicating that here in Postman. So this would be like uh, the email uh, form input, and this would be the, the password form input. And this would be as if um, someone typed in their email and someone typed in their password. And then when they hit send, that's when we hit send here, it's kind of like them hitting send on the form. Great. Um, I have to explain that because some, some people know and some people don't know. All right. Um, what's gonna happen is we're gonna get a response down here, right? Uh, hopefully if everything goes well, we will get this response right here, which will be a little bit of information from Couchbase but also we're adding a, a profile ID onto that object as well to send back to them. So we should see basically a, base, a, a JSON object show up here. And there is gonna be a profile ID in there that we need to do something with. Now normally I could hit send, I could wait for the profile ID to come back here, I could then copy it, you know, uh, highlight it, copy it, and then go stick that into our, our, uh, our environment variables here. But what I've done instead is I've created this little test, which basically just um, gets that data back from the response. 
and then goes and sets that environment variable um, kind of as an after effect. Uh, as long as everything goes okay, this will run and it will reset that, um, that environment variable. So let's go ahead and try this out real quick and let's go ahead and hit send. Cool. So it gives back a CAS token. So a CAS is an interesting thing in Couchbase. This is uh, basically a hash or a number that's sent back to us um, that we can use in the future if we want to, to ensure that a document that we wrote in the past hasn't been updated. So this CAS value is useful for that. You can look that uh, up more if you're working with Couchbase and want to know more about that. We don't really need to understand anything about this token here. That's another thing that was sent back from Couchbase. But what we do need to uh, understand is this PID. And, and we need to copy that over into our environment variables. Luckily, with our test, that should already be here. Look at that. So great. Now, as we go um, and do other requests, um, we will have that already ready to go because um, we're gonna we're gonna do a login next. We're gonna try to validate the account. We're gonna create a blog and we're gonna get some blog posts. And between those other few, uh, four requests that we're doing, we're potentially either gonna need a PID or a session ID. Now, when we log in our user. Um, we are going to get a session ID back for that one. We're also going to save that to our environment variables here as well. I know this seems like a lot if you haven't done it before, but believe me, this all makes sense. Um, and this is all very useful information if you're going to be building an API and testing it. Um, it took me uh, lots of hours to figure all this stuff out. So um, hopefully I'm doing you a service by kind of pointing out all these things and showing you the cool little tricks of how to do these. So cool. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is we want to use, uh, session tokens. Uh, we, actually, we want to create a session document as part of our login endpoint. Um, so let's, let me go ahead and copy in the code for that and then I'll explain it here. So here's going to be our next endpoint. And this is a post. Uh, it's going to be a route called login. And you'll notice the same, uh, code here from before. Um, and this is again, checking that, that both an email and a password came over. So the post that we make for, uh, registering versus logging in, if you, if you look back to most of the websites that you use, the register and the login form look an awful lot the same because they pretty much are right. They're the same two fields. So of course we're going to have the same code here to check whether an email and a password came across. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, um, when we receive that username and that password, we are going to try to get, uh, we're going to try and get a document where it equals the email that we sent, right? And that, so that should be our account document. And um, remember our account document is where the password is stored. So the first thing we want to do once we fetch that document, um, if, if there's no error, is we want to check if the password that they just sent us also matches the password in there. Now here's the, here's the issue is that the password they're sending us is plain text, password one, two, three, four. Whereas in the database, it's been encrypted already. So just like we encrypted it with decrypt, we can use a, a method called compare sync. And what this will do is it will take the, the plain password that we have from the request and it will compare it against the password that's encrypted in the database and it will do all the hard work of comparing that plain text versus encrypted one and make sure that they that that this does not return false right if it returns false we need to say uh oh as uh, uh, 500 error message password is invalid right and just stop everything in its tracks otherwise what we want to do is we want to create a new session document that is tied to that account okay uh, and uh, specifically a uh, tied to that uh, profile ID. We're also going to use UUID to create um, a session ID for this session document. So not only will this session have a key that is equal to this hash that we create here, but we'll also have an ID inside um, that is the, the value of that hash for easy access in this demo. So, right, I've explained all that. All, all that's left to do really uh, in this endpoint is to actually insert this new session document. So we have session ID. Um, that's going to be this ID right here. That will be the key for the document. And then session will just be this object here. That'll be the, the value, the JSON value. 
Uh, but notice we've passed something else in here. So this is a, a set of options. Um, now, some of the different options we could use here are session, timeout, et cetera. There's, there's a bunch of different ones you could look them up. But expiry is pretty cool for what we're trying to do right now. So we're gonna set exp, uh, expiration on this document to 3,600. And um, what that is, is that is an hour. So 3,600 milliseconds is one, one hour. And um, once we're done uh, and everything has completed uh, and, and we have an error again for some crazy reason, we are going to send that uh, session ID that we just created back to them, right? So with this in place now, um, that's our login. Right? It's, again, seems like a lot of stuff going on here, but believe me, all of this stuff is required for doing secure login, encrypting the password, and, and kind of, uh, it, you know, you could obviously do a lot more than this as well, but for a very basic demo of showing how to do kind of uh, encrypted uh, and, and authorization and, and logging a user in, th this is the bare minimum that we need to do. So let's take a look at our login user uh, request here. Notice it looks very the same in the, in the body. And also the test looks very the same, right? Uh, this test, think of this test, uh, we could do tests here, but what I'm actually using this test section for is is, is saving that ID that we're getting back um, so that we don't have to do it, we don't have to copy and paste it ourselves. So let's go ahead and hit send. We know kind of what's gonna happen on the endpoint side. And here we get our SID back. And if we go check our uh, environment variables, look, we've got both of them now. Now we can start doing the other things like um, calling the validate account endpoint, the create blog and the get blog post endpoint, which are gonna need these values, but we don't have to do anything anymore. We can just kind of click on these things or run them and it will automatically work. All right, so we can walk through the, the whole idea for this collection is to test out the process of walking through from registration, login, validating account, creating a blog, and getting all blog posts in order. So that's why it has its own um, uh, environment variables and, and these requests set up in this specific manner. Now, before we do the rest of those, let's go ahead and copy each one of those in here and understand kind of what uh, each endpoint is doing. Um, let's, the first one we're going to do is going to be the get account. All right, here. All right. So this is in a, this is a, a get, uh, method, which is forward slash account. If we go back and look at our postman, um, it's going to be this uh, endpoint right here. So it's going to be localhost 3000, which is um, where our server is running. And the, the path is gonna be account. And we're passing it uh, a, a profile ID here. Now, remember before that one that re we removed, that, that one was very much like this. But uh, the difference with this one is that we have some authorization here and we're, we're using a bearer token. And what we're doing is we're passing this session ID over and we're telling them, hey, look, um, uh, here is our session ID. And then in our body, we're actually not passing anything in our body. We're just passing our, our profile ID and that session ID as part of a bearer token um, as a way of kind of, uh, kind of like an authorization. Um, so we need to be able to validate um, whether or not they are who they say they are, they are and whether or not they have the right session ID uh, and whether that session ID kind of matches up with the, um, the profile ID. So you'll notice one thing that's a little bit different about this endpoint is it has this validate. And this is, it's right in the middle of the, the URL, um, the path for the endpoint and the actual um, function which does the work for this endpoint. And this is called middleware. So uh, we don't actually have this validate function anywhere. So we're gonna need to create this. And then I'll walk through that really quickly with you. And then everything from there is gonna be like super smooth sailing. Um, I'm gonna actually go ahead and put this up here at the top. And I'm going to say, uh, middleware, because I'm gonna show you guys something else in a little bit where we can create another piece of middleware besides this one. And I'm gonna call this validate. Um, let me think uh, what I should call this. Uh, I'm gonna call it validate. 
validate account, I guess. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna update it over here too. Cause I want, I, I want to actually create two different pieces of validation um, just to show you guys something else that we could turn into a piece of middleware. So um, how this works is that before any of the code here in this callback gets run, um, we can indicate a piece of middleware that has access to the same request and response variables uh, and then also has a method it can call called next, which uh, so uh, inside this validation, we can check some things uh, and potentially send an error back if something doesn't check out uh, or if everything checks out fine, we get through a, a big piece of code, we can then call this method called next, which will then send us in here to, uh, to finish up the rest of the code that uh, gets processed for this uh, endpoint. So before we go over what this is doing, it's basically just getting the, um, the profile back, the profile back and sending it back to, to them. Um, but it's also a way of validating, does this uh, user with this profile have an open session on the database? And we do because we set a session document for one hour and I haven't been talking for an hour yet. Um, so that document really still should be there and we should be able to validate. Uh, whether or not it is. So really quickly, like I said, this validate account middleware has access to request, response, and next. Um, it, it, you can do other things as well, but these are the ones we're gonna talk about right now. They're the most important and the most widely used uh, things that you would use inside of a middleware. Now, um, auth header, request headers authorization. Basically what that means is, did they use this authorization tab here or when they formulated the request on the HTML side, did they actually create a bearer token with uh, some type of a value in it? So if they did, um, what that would end up looking like, I believe, uh, it would actually come over in the request something like this, bearer and then one, two, three, four, it's like, right? It would have a piece of text, a space, and then a token. So that's kind of what it would look like. So the value of this auth header right here will be um, basically a piece of text. Um, and then what we can say is, is if there is an auth header, if they did include one of those, let's say that bearer token is that string split on a space, that'll give us the bear and then the actual number as uh, basically two different pieces of text and, and kind of uh, in an array. And so bear token is now kind of like an array. It, it, it's an array of two strings, one, one that says bear and one that has some number in it that we wanna try and get at. And um, if, if also if bear token that length is two, kind of we know everything is okay. We know that they, that they uh, sent this over. It's kind of in the right format. And at that point, we can try to uh, take that um, second item in the array, which we know is that SID, and we can say collection.get, and that SID will be um, will be this number right here, this hash right there. Um, once if that's a, if we get if we get it, great. Um, if not, um, we'll we'll tell them, hey, that's an invalid session token. So if if we can't get that document, then it doesn't exist. So uh, the session token is invalid. Uh, otherwise, if it is, what we're going to do is we're going to add a request, uh, a PID onto the request. Um, and then we are going to do collection.touch. Now, we haven't seen this yet. Collection.touch is interesting. Uh, it allows us to, to basically take that session document and update it, Ex update the expiry uh, on it, and we're going to set it to 3600. So we're now going to, when we, when we, not only does this validate function kind of check whether or not we're, we have a valid session open, but it also, um, anytime we use this validate middleware, so whether we do a blog post or whether we get all blog posts or, or whatever we decide, uh, wherever this validate is, is working in, in conjunction with some endpoint, Anytime someone uses that endpoint, it's going to extend the life of that session ID. So give them more time, right? That's why when you're on some websites and you don't do anything, uh, you don't click any buttons or type any text in or whatever, um, post anything, 
for an hour it tries to log you out, that's because you haven't been continually extending your session, right? Most websites, like my E-Trade account, um, if you don't do it, I think in 15 minutes or something like that, it'll actually log you out. It's because you're not continually hitting some type of an endpoint that's extending that session ID for you. Um, great, now if all of that happens, uh, if we get through all of that, which you know only takes milliseconds, <laughs> Um, we then call next, and what next does is it sends us back into our endpoint and allows us to keep kind of doing things. And so at this point, all we're going to do is we're going to say collection.get. We're going to request the document that has that uh, profile ID, and then we are going to send that response back to them. And they're going to get this uh, result, and we're going to send. Uh, we're going to we're going to response dot send. We'll you know uh, send them kind of. Uh, a 200 okay back and they'll get the they'll get the the, the document back and also uh, as a side effect their session will be extended for another hour all right that is like all of the really kind of hard and complex stuff and you've got this repo to kind of go over this several times you've got the video where i try to explain it as as, as good as i can um the, the rest of it's all pretty easy from here so i'm now going to add the, the next uh, two, we're gonna put two more endpoints in here really quick, and I'm gonna do this fast so we can go ahead and wrap this up. Um, this is going to uh, post a blog, and then this next one is going to get all blogs, okay? And we'll walk through these really quickly here. And also, both of the postman, oh, oh I know what we need to do here. We need to escape these back ticks here these are supposed to be oops wrong ones escape these back ticks right here i need to update the um i think i need to update our repo because the yeah the code in the in the readme does not have these back ticks in it that's a problem that i created here and now we actually do have to restart to the the server um okay we have another issue here Oh, the validate is wrong. Remember we changed the name of the validation to validate account rather than just validate. Not that one, this one and this one. All right, now we're back up and running. Cool, so um, if a user wants to do a post for a blog, um, of course we will need to validate their account so whenever you post a blog, not only are you posting a blog and is a, 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 blog, a document is being uh, added, which is the blog ID and the, and the blog value, which will be, it's just gonna be a simple title and content field and then a timestamp. And it also will be associated, right? So here's that uh, a relationship being created again, right? Each blog is um, related to a specific profile so that we know uh, when we wanna go get the blogs, uh, who is this blog associated with? Next thing we need to do is um, after we kind of uh, check to make sure there is a both title and content, this is the same kind of code again as the, the validate um, uh, e email and password. And, and so, so this kind of code is being reused over and over. We're actually going to create a middleware uh, with that really quickly before we end this, but I'll, I'll, we'll do that in a few minutes. Um, and that can be kind of a bonus. You can stay around for that if you'd like. Otherwise, you can, you can get out of here. <laughs> um, so here we go. Um, this just basically creates a blog. It, it grabs uh, the PID of, um, uh, from the request. Uh, you get to pass a PID along uh, and tell it who, who you are whenever you're creating a blog post. So we'll, we'll be able to store that. It's going to send over a title and a content. And so this is all basic stuff here. We're just taking stuff from the request, building an object out of it, and then uh, creating a, a unique ID for the blog post key. And then we're inserting that into the database using that unique ID and the blog. Uh, and then, boom, we're done. So when someone hits this endpoint, it'll create that blog post for them. Um, the next one here, um, I kind of lied. We do have one more thing we need to do. We are using nickel in Couchbase in order to query outside of doing a basic key value lookup, whereas, hey, here's the key, give me the document that uh, that is associated with that key. We have a concept of something called, or actually we have a 
not a concept, we have a query language called Nickel. And Nickel is very much like SQL. In fact, if you've used SQL in the past, this will look exactly like it, right? Select all from uh, potentially some database or table where uh, kind of here we're saying select all from the bucket blog where the type of the document is blog, right? Understand why we're using that type now. It narrows down the number of documents that we have to look at where type equals blog and PID equals whatever, right? So let's say that this profile posts 20 blogs over the course of a month. This uh, SQL query will go find all 20 of those and we will then um, send them back as a response and boom, you'll have a big JSON object with 20 different blog posts in it and all the information you need so you can display that blog on your website or whatever. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out here is that we have some options. So when we say, when we, when we do a query to the, to the database, we say cluster.query and we pass that query in. That is basically this string right here. Um, now I could, I could just hard code that PID in here or I could um, actually put in like, um, PID, I think I would have to do request dot PID. So I could do that, but um, you wanna be careful of that sometimes. And also I wanted to show you guys that we have the ability to do um, parameterized queries just like you do in SQL here in Nickel. Of course, you, you would have to have that in a query language like this uh, in, in, a, in a type of enterprise production database. Um, cool. So the only thing that we don't have is that we can't actually hit both of these right now. I could hit this endpoint because it's, it's not using any special type of querying. But since we're doing some querying in this endpoint, I do need to go over really quickly to, um, we need to go to the database and we need to create an index. So just like in SQL, you can create an index with a piece of SQL. You can do that here with nickel too. So we're gonna create an index called blog by user. In other words, all the blogs associated with a specific user. And this is um, a secondary index. Um, more importantly, I think what you would call this, uh, let me see if I can get this right here. Yeah, a composite secondary index. And the reason it's a composite secondary index is because you're using a, kind of like a composite of two different uh, properties on these uh, JSON documents. So type and PID are both um, properties on the JSON value of a blog document, right? So um, we call it a composite secondary index. It's not a primary index. Um, and this is actually a very, very performant way to cover indexing. So, so what happens is when we create, let's go ahead and execute this and we will see, um, and let's go ahead and create a few blog posts real quick. Actually, first let's make sure that our index has been created here. And let's just go ahead and create a few blog posts real quick. And let's call validate account first. Okay, cool, validation. So our validation endpoint works. Uh, that just extended our, um, our session for another hour. And then now we can call create blog. And we'll take a look. We have an authorization here with a bearer token because we need that now. Um, and we just have sample blog posts. Um, we're gonna send that. Cool, here's the document it created. So it's nice that uh, to, to be able to send back this information to your users uh, of your API so that they have a lot of information. They've got the 200 okay and they've got a nice little response here. Now let's go ahead and switch this up a little bit and call it, uh, let's say two instead of one, because we already did one. So we'll do a second one, we'll do a third one, and it doesn't really matter now, let's just keep on doing a few more. And we'll do something else here. Right, who cares? All right, so we got a few blog posts in there now, right? Um, probably don't want to save any of that. Uh, so I'm just going to close this and hit don't save. Um, but now I want to be able to go get all blog posts. Um, but before I do that, let's take a look at here. Um, let's refresh real quick. I don't need to refresh, but notice how our index now says that it's indexing 10 items. 
So this is very cool. Um, if if we if this user had posted 10 blog posts and then another uh, user posts 100 blog posts and then 50 other uh, users post 5, 10, 15, 20, however many blog posts they've posted, this index is going to have indexed quite a few documents. Um, but when we say, hey, we need a blog post by this user, it's going to be able to, to be uh, from from within the index that it's already created, be able to return those results to us, which is very fast, rather than going to have uh, to look up all those documents kind of individually, gather them all up, and then send them back to us. So that's kind of a very high level way of thinking about it, but just think of it kind of um, this index kind of already has things ready for us, ready to go, um, and all we need to do is tell it um, basically what the profile ID is. Uh, and what document type it is. And it, it's going to very easily be able to say, oh, I've already got that stuff here. Here it is. So now when I go ahead and call um, this get blog posts, um, all that we're doing here is uh, calling blogs, the blogs endpoint, and we're passing this SID. Um, and let's go ahead and hit send. And here you can see all of these blog posts come back for this particular user, okay? So if I were to, let's go ahead and uh, create another document in here, which um, we'll just copy one of these and, or actually we can just, let me, let me open up one of these, not the session, let me open up one of the blog posts. Let me copy one of these real quick, all right? And then let me add a document. And I'm just going to call this 54321. And I'm going to paste this in here. I'm going to give it, it's a PID of 54321. And I will say this is 100 or 1,000. 1,000. And um, so this is not going to uh, be associated with our profile ID anymore. And then if we go back and look at here at indexes, now notice another item has been indexed, but if we call this again, we should not see that one anywhere in, anywhere in here, okay? And we don't, because this is again, getting just the blogs associated with the, the profile ID of the user that is associated with this session ID, right? The only thing that we needed to pass here was the session ID. And, and that validate function, that validate middleware is figuring all that out for us, what profile we're associated with and everything, right? So this is very smart stuff. Now, um, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you've made it through this far, um, pat yourself on the back. Um, check out the repo. Um, the link will be down uh, in the description. And um, But at this point, I wanted to show you one more thing. like. Um, and we're not going to do all of these, but, uh, I'll show you one thing is that here, this account, this post account and the login account are both using the same exact piece of code here. And really this is just some validation going on, but I just want to show you how, uh, these two do not use any type of middleware, these two endpoints. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna kind of cut this piece of code out right here. And I'm gonna cut, and I'm just gonna delete this one. And then I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna say validate, um, I'm gonna say validate email pass, right? And then on this one, I'm also gonna do the same thing. Validate email pass. And then what I'm going to do is come up here and say const validate email pass equals async um, so we have to do request response. I was thinking about it and it's right, it's right below on the next line. I was thinking, what, what do I have to type here? Um, and then I can do this and now I can just paste that in and boom, we're done, right?
Well, no, not actually. Um, we do have to go down one more line because if we can make it through all this, and remember, we have access to request and response just like we did inside of the endpoint, but I do need to call next right here if this is going to work properly. So this will now replace that redundant code that we had in both of those um, endpoints. And now, if I save all of that, um, what we should be able to do now is go back to Postman and we're gonna create an account now. And we're gonna do, I'm gonna put my name in here. Um, so if you watch this video, um, boom, here, you've got my email address in case you want to um, say what's up. And you know, if you have any problems with uh, getting any of this to work, you know, email me and say, hey man, let's, just, let's hop on Zoom. And I'm gonna put my, the password that I use for everything important here. I'm gonna, and that is one, two, three, four, password, okay? That please don't use that and go, and go try hacking in my accounts. But now we're gonna create a new account for me. I'm gonna hit send. Boom, our PID has been updated. It's been updated here too. I'm gonna log in. Um, again, I need to put my information in here. And then, uh, what was it? One, two, three password is what I use for everything important. Oops, that didn't work. Just trying to be slick there. Using the keyboard, it didn't work. All right, now I hit send. Now a new SID, uh, 5C2 is there. And so now I should be able to validate account. There's my name. Create blog. We'll do uh, awesome blog post because that's all that I write. And then content will be super awesome content. Send that over and we'll do, I can't even spell post right. We'll do a number two and a number three, All right? You get the point. And now I get blog posts and I should get back just those three. One, two, three, right? So. We've tested everything out. All of our endpoints work. We've taken some redundant code, turned it into some validation. Um, potentially, we could even, you know, if you want to have a little challenge, um, there is still one more piece of redundant code here that checks for title and content rather than email and password. Maybe you could do uh, a better one of these pieces of middleware that validates either of them. I don't know. I don't know if you'd really want to do that because they are fundamentally different things. When you, um, if you start to build out blogs more, you will end up having more than just title and content. And even though those two pieces of code look very similar right now, further down the road, um, you know, it, it, your, uh, your blog post validate might, middleware might need to be look a lot different than this one. But point is, um, if you see redundant code like that, you can kind of um, extract it out into its own function, make middleware out of it. You can actually uh, also create middleware like um, body parser here. Um, another thing that we, you can do is that you don't even have to create middleware and inject it into each of the uh, endpoints like this. There are other ways to create kind of like middleware for all of your endpoints. Um, and I believe that is exactly what the uh, body parser guys are doing with, with their, I, I believe that this is just middleware, right? And we kind of use it here and we, and we kind of set the parameters for it. And then that body parser is used for every uh, HTTP post that comes into one of your endpoints, right? So there's just so much more that you can do and so much more to learn about Express. So good luck there. I hope everything um, worked out well for you. Uh, if you followed along, hopefully I wasn't uh, too fast. Um, the best way is just to watch this passively and then go try all this stuff out on your own. If you want to get a hold of me, uh, my name is HTTP Junkie on Twitter. Um, you can find me on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, any of these places. Uh, same username. And yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.